A leg injury stopped Madawi Prince running in the Truer Memorial at Bankstown recently, but trainer Keith McDeed has informed the local club he will be a starter on Saturday night. This is his local hometown, local area, and uh, he'll be out there to um, give a good sight to the locals. And uh, he's a top horse, you know, he's as tough as teak. Uh, he'll give a great show for the people of the Hunter Valley. Madawi Prince heads a smart field of 12, which includes Admiral Chimes, Butler's Love, Seb Coe, and Ultra Jet. The race will coincide with the 45th anniversary of night racing in Newcastle and a standing start will be used for the first time in nine years. <laughs> Officials believe this type of start will make for a more open event. The club to use the standing start for one race a meeting in preference to the mobile gates. When the strands are released, they step away. Now that's the skill uh, in uh, harness racing driving is to make sure the horses step away okay and uh, some can break and some can gallop and it puts a lot more risk and a lot more interest into the race. Yeah, you see, boys, I told you not to go home. All you need is faith, hope, and a little bit of love. Well, Operation Coast Rose will run until the end of January, a time holiday makers traditionally travel the Pacific and New England highways. Speeding, drink driving, the wearing of seat belts and driver fatigue will be targeted, all to reduce the growing road toll. As of today, the road toll is 614 deaths in New South Wales, which represents a figure 69 more than for the same period last year. Assisting police on the north coast will be officers from other parts of the state. They'll be based at Taree, Port Macquarie, Kempsey, Coffs Harbour and Lismore. Motorists are being targeted this year not only from the ground but also from the air. A plane will be used to make sure traffic flows smoothly and to detect those drivers who are doing the wrong thing. The aircraft will uh, radio ahead to highway patrol vehicles who will intercept uh, errant drivers further up the road. The majority of fatal crashes this year involve drivers losing control of their vehicles or colliding with an oncoming car or fixed object. The message from police is not new. Plan your journey, allow more time than you normally would, exercise restraint and exercise patience if you're stuck in a traffic jam during the holiday period. The Premier made a flying visit to Maitland and while in the marginal electorate he gave the Knights a welcome Christmas present. And I'm pleased to announce that uh, the government will pay the sum of $2.36 million to the International Sports Ground Trust. 
Due mainly to extensive renovation work on the Knights' home ground in the 80s, the club ran up a $2.6 million debt. Today's grant wipes out most of the problem. The New South Wales League has waived the remaining debt. It's a huge boost for the Knights, the club now able to get on with the job of playing and promoting football. This is just an enormous stride, and that's an understatement, um, in terms of uh, down the path that I know that uh, we all understand that we need to go and uh, it'll be very important for our future. The grant will no doubt be the envy of other sporting groups such as the Breakers who are also in tight financial times. The Premier hasn't hidden the fact that the announcement comes with an election in just three months, giving the good news in the electorate of Maitland, while the Knights are based 25 kilometres away in Broadmeadow. So I think there's some fairly obvious reasons there that I don't have to elaborate on. It's the Premier's third visit to the electorate in six months and Mr Fay says he'll be back a few more times leading up to the poll in March. Peter Ryan, NBN News. Fifty-nine-year-old Jack Griffiths has been caring for people as an ambulance officer for more than three decades. I'm the only male member in our family in five generations that's never been down a coal mine. So uh, it was a pleasure to break the tradition. He's worked in just two stations, Bullaroo and Maitland. In Maitland he was one of the main fighters for a special rescue vehicle. He's become a tradition in the area and today the Premier handed Jack the Community Service Award. I was set up for it though, I, I didn't know it was coming. Jack has retired because of ill health. His workmates say he'll be greatly missed. I'm a type of guy I get mad about twice a year and, and uh, that was one time that I really got mad because uh, to me I thought the umpire was wrong and I go out there and I'm, I get teed off and throw a little dirt and throw a little balls and stuff. Goma Hodge's explanation for his part in a fiery weekend of baseball against the Perth Heat. With the threat of a fine hanging over him, he has no regrets for his actions toward the umpire after pitcher Warren Holding, who could also face disciplinary action, was tossed out of game one. I don't know if I'll get fined or not, but uh, it was something that I had to do and I had to back up a ball player that got kicked out. The intense rivalry continued on Saturday night, with Perth overheating on two occasions, taking exception to Neil Webber's pitching and an incident on second base. Coach Hodge believing that like the Knights and Manly in Rugby League, the Eagles have found their new grudge team in Perth. Well, the tempers was flaring up a little bit and uh, uh, to, me, to me it's something that, that goes along with baseball and uh, as long as nobody got hurt and everything, it's uh, something I think the fans likes. The 20-member Newcastle team left off where their juniors did in Wollongong a week earlier, winning the Intercities Carnival for the first time in four years. Adrian Tobin won the under-16 board race and gave Joshua Blair the shock of his life when he passed his teammate with just metres to go in the under-18 surf race. Kilmurray finished second in the under-16 and 18 board event and third in the 18 swim. She's now targeting the Nationals.
I've been training really hard leading up to the Australian titles, which I hope to win the under-16 board and um, do well in the Ironwoman. In basketball, the Falcons have lodged a second offer with the NBL for the services of Butch Hayes. The import guard wants to play for Newcastle, but his former club Illawarra is exercising a last rights option. The Hawks have till 5pm Thursday to match the offer. Meantime, European handball was back at Broadmeadow Basketball Stadium yesterday. Several exhibition games were played featuring members of the state and national team in a bid to raise the profile of the sport in the Hunter region. Despite many people leaving their shopping until this week, shopping centres and stores are already reporting a bumper turnover. In Newcastle City, David Jones is up on last year's takings by 7% and according to City Centre Manager Paul Murphy, the increase is being experienced across the board. The major uh, retailers are indicating that they're certainly up on last year's figures. Some are saying single figures, some are saying they're heading towards double figures. Um, but there's a good positive response from most of the traders saying that uh, the city is alive and vibrant and everybody's looking forward and spending dollars for Christmas. In shopping centres, the news is also good. At Garden City, the number of people coming through the door has increased by 12%, while at Charlestown Square, it's up by 5%. Most centres will be staying open late for the rest of this week to cater for those last-minute buyers. And if you're planning on visiting Garden City, then there's also a safety message to be had. Highway Patrol officers, the RTA, the Ambulance Service and KidSafe have set up a display to spread the road safety message message. There's a simulated car rollover machine and food for thought, this seatbelt simulator which shows what it's like to crash at a speed of just 10 kilometres an hour. The display will continue until Friday. Robinson was outed for not allowing fourth-placed Hollywood Lad, the widest runner at the top of the straight, to run on its merits in race seven at Canterbury last Wednesday. Hollywood Lad, prepared by Newcastle trainer Paul Perry, drifted in the market from sixes to sevens, finishing four lengths behind favourite Al Lance. Robinson was out until March the 1st, but he's maintained his innocence and will appeal the decision. In surfing, Lake Macquarie's Christian McCall has been selected in the four-man Australian junior team after the Nationals at Phillip Island, Victoria. McCall finished fourth in the championship, qualifying for the world titles, which will be held in Bali next July. Tani Horridan finished fifth in the women's and is reserved for the world championship. Meantime, Newcastle speedster Peter March has been included in the country team to play Zimbabwe in Dubbo on Boxing Day. March pulled out of the team that played against the state second 11 due to work commitments. And Belmont's former Australian country player Mark Curry has accepted a teaching position in Tenterfield next year, which will end a long and successful career with Newcastle. <laughs> Under Minister Beddell's decision, 11 wood chip licences have been renewed and two new licences granted. The timber industry is ecstatic with the decision, saying it will provide greater access to international markets and more certainty for sawmilling communities. The industry has always claimed the only wood used for chipping comes from timber offcuts in mills. Not everyone agrees.
Conservationists fear logging in at least seven old growth forests in northern New South Wales will now be given open slather. Australia will now export 6.7 million tonnes of chips, up from 6.1 million tonnes. Included in Minister Beddle's package are more controls to ensure wood chipping companies comply with limits. Despite this, the move has split the government. Shown here in a recent fact-finding visit to the Hunter, Environment Minister John Faulkner says he's extremely disappointed that Mr Beddle has ignored his advice on the protection of old growth forests. Senator Faulkner's criticism was echoed by a coalition of conservation groups that says the federal government's environmental record is now in tatters. It says it's unfortunate, however, the backlash is also likely to harm the New South Wales opposition's chances at the next election. Joanne Shoebridge, NBN News. Lake Macquarie Council last night approved extensions to the yet-to-be-started Glendale Shopping Centre and to Charlestown Square. While it's yet to be given final board approval, the lend -Lease Corporation, which owns Charlestown Square, wants to carry out more than $27 million in improvements. It includes a Target store, extensions to Franklin's and seven new specialty shops. And for those finding it difficult to park this Christmas, there's further good news. In total addition, there's about 430 uh, extra car spaces to support the uh, additional floor area. Also given approval, the second stage of the yet-to-be-built Glendale Shopping Centre, shown here in colour. It includes a toy superstore, three restaurants and a number of smaller shops. In all, the centre, which is being built by the Stockland Group, will cover an area of 37,000 square metres. That's just a little smaller than the Jesmond Centre and Garden City. Work on this site should begin next month, with the centre due to open for Christmas shopping 1995. Jodie McKay, NBN News. It shook Newcastle for only a matter of seconds, but it killed 13 people and damaged thousands of buildings. Australians rallied to help, raising nearly $8 million for disaster victims. But five years and 2,800 successful claims later, Newcastle is about to return the favour. The $1.2 million that remains in the fund has been transferred so it can help other Australians in crisis. We are now able to help anywhere in Australia, but only to the extent of about 50% of the funds. The other half will stay in the Hunter for any future local disasters. It comes after the Supreme Court hearing earlier this year that said the money could be shared with areas outside the Hunter. You cannot go to the donors of $7.9 million, many, many of them are very small donations, and ask them really what they had in mind. But what we're confident in, they had in mind that they wanted to help somebody who'd been affected by a disaster. The 15 outstanding claims will be assessed by the new fund, although some projects will have to rely on state and federal government grants. Obviously the cooperative store building has not been rebuilt. The Christchurch Cathedral is in an appalling state and only now starting to be repaired. Richard O'Leary, NBN News. Governments, they've increased the time.
Nathan Newson is a very lucky young man. Two days ago, he fell into the swimming pool and stopped breathing for close to four minutes. One day, he'll thank his oldest sister, seven-year-old Roxanne. She dragged him from the bottom of the pool and screamed for help. Nathan's mother, Kim, thought her son was dead. Well, I felt when we got him actually out of the pool that there was no pulse, there was nothing. He was gone. Um, but I think it was from what I knew yeah. um, and what the people around in the street knew that, you know, that he has survived and that he's pulled through. Kim automatically began CPR. She was helped by a neighbour who heard her screams. While both thought Nathan was gone, they continued to massage his tiny heart and breathe for him. Eventually, he came around. He was rushed by ambulance to Cessnock Base Hospital. The danger period without oxygen is three minutes. After that, brain damage is likely. According to those who treated him, Nathan stopped breathing for close to four minutes. However, because of the skills of his mother and neighbour, Nathan is not only alive, but very much looking forward to Christmas. I think everybody you know, should know. Um, I sort of learned it at school, um, and there's a lot of it on the TV, and I think I've picked up a lot of it from there, but everybody should know. Um, what to do yeah, in that situation. Jody McKay, NBN News. Neighbour and his yacht Newcastle Australia is more than halfway through the BOC round the world race. Tonight he is south of Adelaide and expected in Sydney in nine days. But when he gets to Sydney he'll be into another challenge on January 15, a race up the coast to Newcastle against all manners of transport. Trains, boats, planes, motorbikes, helicopters, windjill aircraft, probably two or three of the BOC yachts. The race finishes in Newcastle Harbour. Newcastle Council is calling on local people to get behind their sailing hero. It's hoped the great race from Sydney can be a huge financial boost for Alan Neighbour as he continues his round the world challenge. Today, Council's General Manager Bill Grant said money is to be raised through sponsors of the race, badges and a Margaret Ehrlich concert and cocktail party over that weekend. It's hoped $40,000 can be raised. Neighbour needs $100,000 to finish the challenge. It's expected the outstanding money will come from corporate sponsorship. After taking on the world's oceans, the yachtsman is said to be nervous about the Sydney to Newcastle race. He's uh, a bit publicity shy, but... Uh... He knows that the people of Newcastle want to get behind him and say, well done. Coach Wisman is feeling a little weary after three weeks travelling the US and Canada. He looked at about 20 players for an import to finalise the Falcons lineup. I've interviewed a lot of people and talked to them. I've got a good feel for, for some people and, and uh, now it's a matter of negotiating with agents and, and seeing if we can get a commitment. The Falcons have been in rebuilding mode over the last two months, the loss of Terry Dozier and Derek Rucker being a great blow for the side. Some good news today with Butch Hayes signing on, but the Falcons had to fight his old team for his services. Well, the good players are always a bit of a battle. You know, the, the people don't want to let them go, and, and I'm sure Illawarra didn't want to, and, uh, but Butch had made his, his de decision, and uh, in the end they respected that decision. Hayes will give the Falcons that touch of class, a crucial player for the team's chances next year. Peter Ryan, NBN News.
It was expected to be a fiery meeting, 156 members of the club together to vote on the board and have their say about the club's future. But it turned out to be mostly a night of compliments, with the old board and the advisory board commended for their part in winning the $2.36 million grant from the state government, giving the Knights new life. So not unexpectedly, most of the board was voted back in. It means stability and uh, I think that was very important. I think the club last night showed that uh, of a, a great level of maturity. From the old board, only Kevin Lynch missed out, his position taken by Paul Crosby. Today, Terry Lawler was re-elected as chairman. Terry confirming the board's first challenge is to reassess the club's finances now that it is debt free. Christmas had barely begun when parishioners from around northern New South Wales joined to celebrate the birth of Christ. Tamworth St Paul's Anglican Church conducted its annual Midnight Mass with similar scenes in other churches throughout the day. Morning ended a sleepless night for many children with those gifts finally arriving. After months of saving and careful preparation, it was all over in a matter of seconds. For some children, it was a personal visit from Santa, the patients of Lismore Hospital given something to smile about. Each present making the Christmas stay in hospital just that much more bearable. Santa also took time out from his busy schedule to entertain people at Tamworth's homeless Christmas lunch. The annual event providing some Christmas cheer for those who may have gone without this season. Richard O'Leary, NBN News. It was the world's biggest fleet, amongst the 370 vessels, 10 from Lake Macquarie, including first-timer Margarita. On board, another race debutante, Newcastle's Rob Stubbs, who we talked to shortly after the start. What a magnificent sight. They have to be easy 200 boats, everyone with a spinnaker. I've never seen such a fantastic sight. After more than 30 years of sailing, a dream was coming true. In choppy seas, Rob and the rest of the crew were on their way to Hobart, having overcome a nervous beginning. The free race nerves uh, went as soon as we put the spinnaker up and then uh, came up again to a fairly high pitch where we uh, had to get in amongst uh, 30 or 40 boats right on the buoy and pull it down and get around. The village of Currabubula near Tamworth is also represented with the entry of race veteran Condor. Bookies have it as a 20 to 1 chance, but after striking early trouble, the winner of two Sydney to Hobarts will struggle to catch the leaders. There's little chance Tyree's entrant Millennium will vie for line honours, but the yacht skippered by John Clayton is considered a strong chance in its class. Richard O'Leary, NBN News. The Wyong train spiritual star ridden by Greg Killen got the money, returning seven even and 2.40. El Castano ran on for second, while Tusk Hunter was third. To the Theo Green quality handicap over 1,400 metres and the completion of a late Christmas present for trainer Max Lees. Under sail gave Lees a double after Chlorophyll was successful in the first. Ridden by Lisa Crop, it paid 13.30 for the win and 3.70 for the place. Donette and the Ollie returning 2.10 and 3.30. To Caulfield and the running of the Christmas handicap over 1,200 metres. 
Pay the Kings returned 12.30 and 3.20. Blue Boss 2.30 for second and Mr Elegant paid 150 for third. The Lake Macquarie contingent survived the Boxing Day bustle on Sydney Harbour and all checked in safe and well at the race's first radio sked this morning. Most are placed within the top 200 of the 370 boat fleet, many in the top 100. It suddenly becomes a big ocean when the front runners are seen clear out on their own with nothing but blue water ahead and astern. But the boats check in twice a day with race headquarters. Lake Macquarie's yacht placings are Alstar 69th, Colix Onyx 35th, Dictator 58th, Fanny Adams 109th, Fiddler's Green 193rd, Highland Fling 97th, Margarita 87th, 97 is 18th, Ninja Go 154th, Polaris 110th, New Horizons 223rd. Condor of Currabubula with a crew from the New England region is 8th overall, while Millennium from Taree is 114th. And one first time Sydney to Hobart sailor, Daniel Cox, who works at NBN in Newcastle and won a competition to ride the yacht Kodak Express in the great race, is finding the going a little tough. How are you today? <laughs> Do you, think, do you think you'll do another one of these? Probably. 